The booth is a, is a collaboration between Red Dot Fine Art Gallery, which is my, my gallery, and um, an indigenous art centre from the Northern Territories called Papania Tula, um, which is uh, regarded as the, the home of the modern indigenous art movement that commenced or started around the, the early 1970s. So what we have here is um, currently on show 28 works uh, of a group of 38 works that have been selected for the for Art Stage 2015, uh, which are a cross-representation spanning uh, over 25 years of works from the community um, that reflect uh, the, the strengths of this community. Um, we have tried to focus on works that will uh, give new entrants or new, or new uh, um, collectors a good understanding of what modern indigenous art is, what it, where it comes from, how it's been, uh, how it's evolved over the last 20, 30 years, and to show that the work is not as very often uh, is perceived to be this tourist type of um, uh, iconographic work that you would see if you were travelling perhaps to Sydney or Melbourne or to the tourist areas of Australia, but this much more modern contemporary type of work. Um, which fits alongside many of the other booths that you have here at, at Art Stage. Um, with regards to the gallery, um, the gallery, as I said, has been it's called Red Dot Fine Art Gallery. We've been in operation for um, this will be our 11th year now, um, and we focus exclusively on Indigenous um, Australian Indigenous art, um, normally community-based projects from across the northern, western deserts of Australia, um, of which Papania is one of. Um, close to 20 indigenous communities that we represent. In my previous career or my previous incarnation, um, I used to spend a lot of time in Australia for work. Um, the artist actually behind us, just fortuitously, is the one that I first bought. Um, the work of Ronnie Camping Jimper. It was just a hobby that's kind of interested me because the artwork is not, for me it wasn't just about the artwork, it was about the anthropological, the, the story behind um, indigenous people in Australia and, and the things that had happened to them historically. Um, so as I started collecting the work, I started learning about them um, and the gallery sort of evolved uh, over time and when I decided that it was time to, to hang up my, my first career boots, as you say, um, the art gallery was just sort of something that happened more by accident really than by design. It really is about the, the fact that we have a, a culture or a, um, or a group of people on the planet still that are so closely connected to their ancestral past. Uh, there are artists um, behind, behind us here, Yakulchi, and behind you, uh, Wallampiri, that are artists that only came out of the desert, had first white contacts 30 years ago, so within our lifetime. So what you have is you have an art movement here, or you have works of art that are beautiful in their own right, but also have an incredibly close connection to their culture. So they're painted, um, not necessarily as pieces of artwork, but as a, almost as a timestamp about a culture about a storytelling process um, of a thousands of years of culture that's happened in Australia that is kind of disappearing. So it's this last sort of insight into a culture that really isn't there anymore. Um, so those, those kind of things really interest me. Um, the artists are painting without any real understanding. You know, most of the artists in most of the booths here will be aware that they're at art stage, will be aware that they're in one of these, you know, premier sort of art fairs or that they're exhibiting in, in major galleries. For most of the artists that I represent, that kind of understanding is not there. They're not painting for that, for that accolade. They're painting to tell a story, to pass forward to another generation. And I like that sort of connection with uh, with, I suppose, the rawness of, 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 a, of, a, uh, of, a, of a people and of a culture. Papania particularly are, are very much that way 
focused in the sense of that the works are very uh, lack any real sort of symbology. They are really just simple, um, simple maps of country that if you didn't know, you would have no idea that they represent a place. But if they were here and they were talking to you about the works, there would be hours and hours of discussion about the, the place that they're painting, the stories behind that place, um, how they would have lived, um, how Wallenpiri, how Yakulchi would have lived. Yakulchi's work here is just straight lines which represent the, the sand hills of the country where she's from. But whilst she paints that work, there will be thousands and thousands of hours of storytelling that would be going around that place to tell you how you would survive if you were living there or how they survived for, for generations and generations on that, on that land. So yeah, that, that element of it is for me very, very important and, 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 very, and, and fascinating. It's getting there. It's still, I suppose, it's still an outsider art to, to some degree. Um, within Australia, it's certainly obviously incredibly well known and incredibly well accepted. Within the contemporary art world, it's still, I think, something that is, is kind of coming to the fore. Um, as I said, the art movement in its current um, uh, incarnation is only 40 years, 45 years old. It started in the early 70s. In, its, in this modern acrylic on canvas type style. Um, and really only over the last 10 or 15 years has there been any real sort of significant um, inroads into, let's say, Western contemporary art. Um, but it's getting there in, in the sense of some of these artists that are on the wall here today will be showing in major museums in Europe and the US this year. Um, there are artists that are represented in pretty much any uh, top indigenous, certainly in all of the top indigenous galleries or museums, but also in the top indigenous, uh, top contemporary art galleries and museums around the world. The Musée de Cabronly in Paris, MoMA in New York, um, the Miami Art Museum. So there is a, there is a growing understanding of the art movement, but it is still, in comparison to. Um, the the western you know modern contemporary art movement it's still pretty much a small focused group of people that know about it yeah well documenta had works by wallen piri that's behind you um, and wallen piri's work will be showing in the miami art museum this year and that that came from documenta from that from that experience from uh, a major u.s collector called dennis Scholl seeing the works of documenta one of the one of the top hundred collectors of contemporary modern art falling in love with this new art that he'd never seen before and that's sort of you know documentary was what two years ago i think it's taken two and a half years to get to the point of that show opening up in miami uh in in february and it, then it will tour for a couple of years so it's started it's it's uh, it's taken a while um but it but it's getting there and 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 top collectors are really have a sensibility to contemporary modern minimalist art um, invariably fall in love with this with this form of art once they've understood where it comes from and what it's about